Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of MM Comics. Today, we are going to do what some people would call sacrilegious. We are going to unbag a polybagged book from the 1990s, in this case, Icon Number One. And uh, this was a book, this is a book from Milestone Publishing, which was an imprint. Uh, <clears throat> here it is, Milestone which was an imprint on DC Comics in the early 90s. All African-American centric stories, heroes, writers, I believe. Um, it was a really cool uh, line of, of books. And I think there's a lot of spec nowadays on the static property, uh, which was kind of like the premier property of the bunch. There's static, icon, hardware, uh, blood syndicate, and a couple others in the series. Um, this, I'd say, is, is the next in line to Static uh, in terms of spec value, in terms of uh, what seems to be on the horizon. And uh, I believe Michael B. Jordan is, is named as a producer on the Static property. And uh, this property is not far behind in terms of uh, spec value, <clears throat> partly because I believe it has a Static preview in the interior. So uh, let's take a look at, let's just for fun, take a look at the Go Collect. Um, FMV for these books. So icon number one. Um, looking at icon number one. There it is, collector's edition. Nice FMV zero. Um, no, that can't be true. Though they just haven't figured it out yet. But it looks like the last three sales for nine eights were one thirty five, two twenty two, and three hundred. So definitely, um, definitely a book that is. Going to be trending up. Um, looks like, yeah, it looks a little wonky. I'm gonna look at GPA. As I said in another video, I like to use both uh, both pricing services for graded books. We're talking about graded books now. So that was something that confused me a lot when I first started collecting was like, how do you get pricing for raw books if most of the resources are about graded books? And that's just a process of kind of um, with experience, you kind of learn, um, the context uh, for a book. For example, if it's a brand new modern book that has no reason really not to be in super high grade, um, the 9.8 price is gonna be a lot more similar to a high grade raw price. Um, whereas if it's a low, if it's an older book, even in the early 2000s, or, or if there's a known condition issue with it, like uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 that comes in a poly bag, um, for example, you know, if there's a known issue with it, then uh, the 9.8 might be far and away different than a high grade raw copy. So it's just a matter of kind of, um, you know, getting some experience with grading your books and, uh, and you know, sort of making your own uh, deductions or extrapolations based on this data for yourself. Um, so for example, if we unbag one of these guys and it's flawless with no spine ticks, no nothing, it just needs a quick press and it might be a, a near 9.8, then the 9.8 uh, prices here that we're finding might bear a lot of resemblance to the value of the raw. Maybe just, you know, but but I would say even, you know, the difference between a 9.6, 9.8 can be so slight that even if it's a flawless looking copy, you can't guarantee a 9.8, you never can. You can barely guarantee a 9.6. Guarantee nine, but you know, a 9.6 pricing for a modern book might be closer to the raw price for a apparent 9.8 raw, if that makes sense. So the next grade down might be a closer ballpark to what it might actually be worth. Um, at that point, someone can buy it raw for that price and then take the gamble themselves on submitting it to a grading company and trying to get that 9.8 to, to bump up the value, right? Bump up the value. So, okay, I'm looking at GPA for icon number one. I'm gonna share the screen with you just for funsies. 
Let's see here. Still getting used to this uh, share screen. Icon number one, GPA. All right. So now we're looking at <clears throat> icon number one, 1993, issue number one. Collector's edition. Now, apparently there was a version, kind of like maybe a newsstand version that's um, not polybagged. And that one, you can see there are not that many graded of this book because it's it's only recently that this book has been really specced on. This book, this is a book you could find in dollar bins for years and years and years. Since 1993, that's almost 30 years ago, sad to say, because um, I was 13 at the time. So, uh, so 90 day average in the collector's edition, meaning someone unbagged this book and sent it in raw, and that book is worth about $250. Last sale, 250, 90 day average, 259. That's about a 250 FMB, right? Interestingly, it looks like that non-collector's edition might be a little rarer because people seem to be willing to pay more for that in a 9.8, so that's interesting. So, and then meanwhile, a 9.6, ouch, not doing so good in a 9.6, $90. So these modern books, just not as desirable to have graded under 9.8. So here's the deal, guys. I got eight copies of this book in the poly bag. Let me get out of this uh, screen sharing here. I got eight copies of this book in the poly bag from my friend, Southern Comic Geek. Shout out to Southern Comic Geek. And I got them for a steal. I don't know if Southern knew the spec value on these books or what, what people were starting to pay for them, but he gave them away. He offered them up for this crazy low price. I was like, I'll take them all. So I took them. And sure enough, I, you know, without having opened any of the bags myself, I went live on an, on one of my Thursday night auctions on Instagram, which I do every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, whenever I can. And I sold them. I auctioned one off and it, it hit 25 bucks. 25 bucks was the selling price for one of these sealed polybagged copies. Okay. And then because I had eight of them, I said, hey, who else wants who else wants a, a blind shot in the dark at a copy for 25? And sure enough, three more people bought it uh, for $25 each. So then what we did for fun on that live stream was we we unbagged them right there. And we sort of got to see, you know, did anybody luck out with a flawless copy? Not so much. Um, you know, maybe one of the reasons that Southern passed them along for so cheap was maybe he just knew that they weren't gonna weren't the, he had a feeling that they weren't gonna come out of the bag so pretty if you know what i mean i did not know this um i did not open any of them so now having unbagged those four right um that i sold off to others and seeing what those you know what what the condition of those was as they came out of the bag i feel less confident about selling the rest. Um, particularly, what inspired this video was these comics were resting on one of my comic shelves over here to my right, and my cat, who, you know, KK Comic Pressing is always asking me to bring into the room, my cat was hanging out next to them, and I look over, I start hearing some sliding, some commotion, you know, it's been, you know, you know how, like, in a, in a workplace, they say, like, this many days without, like, a nuclear meltdown or whatever in my case it's like this many days without a cat a, a, a catastrophe a cat related catastrophe in terms of comics it's like yeah i'll let him hang out in the room it's been x amount of days since anything bad's happened so i'll roll the dice on letting them hang out in here well looks like that day is zero now there's zero days since a catastrophe catastrophe because um my cat Lucy basically slid on top of these icons, which were resting precariously on top of a box. And I just watched as they all kind of like bent over the bin. And I was like, no, no. So that's why I don't want to sell these in the bag anymore. I want to take them out of the bag, look at the damage and then go from there. Cause I, I can't in good conscience as a seller say, 
Who knows what the condition is when I saw my cat sit on top of them and bend them over the, basically bend them over a bin. So we'll see how they did. Let's unbag them together. So, you know, in this case, this is a perfect opportunity to unbag because like I said, we we know that the the condition is going to be less than optimal in here. There are other collectors though who would feel very squeamish about this unbagging because you know, back in the day, it was very um you know, like a death of superman came in a bag and and if you the thinking was if you took it out of the bag, you would ruin the collector's value of it. You know, it's a collector's edition. You you're going to ruin the book if you take it out of the bag. That is not the case anymore. You know, there are going to be certain collectors that want it in the bag um, for their own collection, but it's just we're moving as collectors more towards a graded culture, a culture of nine eights, a culture of, of graded books. And so, you know, being in the poly bag doesn't do any damn good uh, for, for grading purposes. Okay, so here's the first copy of Icon. I almost feel like we should just take them all out, uh, and then by way of that, I can actually, I can actually do a little side tip, a little side pro tip uh, that Reggie Collects actually first taught me, which was put, you know, if you're going to sort of uh, sort of assess the condition of a of a book, um, it's sometimes helpful to put it next to other uh, other copies of the same book, so you can kind of see for yourself, like. Or if I'm trying to find the best copy of the stack, I like to, to put them all next to each other. And, um, and, and you know, it's easier to see, like, all the left corners next to each other, all the bottom corners next to each other, all the spines next to each other. All those things kind of give you a little more information to work on, work off of in terms of, like, getting a real objective opinion about what kind of, what kind of shape the book is in, you know? So let's just open them all up, you know, not belabor the process any more than we have to. Each of these, you know, as a collector's edition book comes with a playing card, a collector's card rather, um, and a little, I'll show you what they come with. They come with one of these icon and rocket cards. So these will be things that like, you know, I wear these silly hat, the silly hat during my auctions. I don't know where it is now. I wear a silly hat with a with a fanny pack in it. This is one of those things I'll put in the fanny pack and give away to people during my auction. But an icon and rocket card comes with this collector's edition. The poly bag itself. And then we have, let's see what it advertises. It says, this set includes icon number one, four panels of giant, excuse me, 16 panel mural and an exclusive cover poster with a Skybox trading card. So we got the Skybox trading card. This is the exclusive cover poster, I guess. Uh, it says, 1839, an alien Starliner explodes. The jettisoned life pod crashes in the middle of a cotton field in the deep south. The pod reconfigures the genetic structure of its passenger to match whatever life form it first encounters. Miriam, the slave woman who discovers the pod, finds a child inside and names him Augustus. The present, the alien is still with us in the guise of a, guise of a successful lawyer, Augustus Freeman IV. As Icon, the hero of Dakota, the alien wields his prodigiously enhanced strength and near invulnerability to become an example of what one man may achieve, but he has a lot to learn. It's easy to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps when you can fly. Very interesting. Never read that before. Sounds like a pretty fucking interesting book. Excuse my language. Um, <clears throat> sounds pretty cool. What else? Uh, we have this four panel. This is really weird. It's like they were they were telling you to to cut these out and sort of reconfigure like a puzzle or something. I wonder what this looks like when you put them all together and where you get the other ones. That could be a fun project. Um, so that's four panels of a big poster or something. And then you've got this poster too. So this is quite a collector's pack. It's pretty cool. These are all things that would be fun to give away, you know? Um, so each of these 
Each of these things I got for a steal from Southern Comic Geek comes with all this comic goodness. No matter what condition the books are in. And I gotta say, I'm not I'm not completely displeased with the condition so far. We'll see. We'll take a closer look in a sec. Okay, so we've got all of our swag over there from the first two. Now we're opening the third one. Obviously, be careful as you cut into this not to cut the paper. I almost want to do this with my Polybag Ultimate Fallout 4 while we're here. While we're on the unbagging kick. All right, let's see. I keep looking over at StreamYard expecting to see a live stream, but we're not live right now, so I'm not going to see anything. All right, let's see. Here's another copy. Cape, cape, same card. Looks like it's the same card in every one. And here's the copy. <clears throat> Complete with cat-related bend, spine bend. Don't, comics and cats don't mix, man. They don't mix. Same poster. I want to just see if this four-panel thing is the same. I'm sure it is. It would be cool if it wasn't. Is this the same? I think it's the same, yeah. Okay. We got that. That is a weird concept. I don't under, I don't quite understand it, I have to say. Okay, here's the last one. We're gonna open it up. It would be great if one of these survived the catastrophe. But I don't know. I think that I mean, even the the copies that had not sustain the catastrophe uh, were not really great, you know, 9-8 candidates themselves. So it would be a miracle if one of these comes out nice. Okay, there's the fourth card. All right, let's check them out, guys. Let's put the four books next to each other and see how we did. Four copies. So this is what I like to do. I'm going to show you the back covers. Well, I'll show you the front. Let's see. Let's put all four corners next to each other. Okay. So the, the resolution on the camera isn't great. If I was going to pick the best corner out of these... These first two look like they have little tags on them, right? So kind of what I do for, for finding the best grade is I look at one area at a time next to each other. So like say I've got like 10 copies of like ASM 55 and I wanted to, you know, maybe pull two that I thought might might be good 9-8 candidates because that's already, you know, a very desirable book um, with a good future ahead of it, in my opinion. So. I'll look at I'll look at the first I'll look at the top corners of them all then I'll look at the bottom corners of them all. This is also what I do in a comic store if I'm looking for the best copy on the shelf. You know what I mean? Top corners, bottom corners, spines next to each other. I start we weeding out the bad ones. I, I sort of pick my best based on those three features: corner, corner, spine. Pull the best couple and then check the back cover. Then you know then then compare them to each other and see which ones went out. So anyway. In this first criteria, these first two on the top looks like, look like they have a worse corner. Now let's check these bottom two corners next to each other. These bottom two corners both look good, but this one has a has a tick right by the corner. So so far, based on corners, this one's the the this one's in the lead. Now let's look at the spine on it. I'm gonna look myself. Wow. We might have a survivor here, guys. We might have a survivor. Um, the back cover is black. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. I think we might have a survivor in our midst. A survivor of the catastrophe. I like this one. I've got to look in better light because I'm seeing some spine ticks and and I'm not sure if they're pressable or not. But check out the spine on this one. 
trying to get light here. There's some light. Okay. I don't like this video quality. So here's a tick. Video quality is really tough. Another tick. Well, based on this crappy video quality, it, it looks like those two ticks are going to be a problem. Um, so it might not be worth pressing and all that. Yeah, I see little tiny ticks here and there. I might give it a press and just see what happens. This might be the best one. Now let's no, you know, we looked at it based on the corners before, but let's just check these other copies, make sure we don't have a, a better survivor in the midst. Checking the spines here. I see, yeah, I see spine ticks on all of them. I think it was the catastrophe. Otherwise, we probably would have had a pretty good uh, a pretty good candidate in our midst. But sadly, we'll never know. We'll never know what condition these would have been before my cat sat on these books. So now that we've had them, now that we have them out of the bag, you know, I can assess them. I can maybe press one or two of them. I can, you know, sell them if I want to in good conscience, not, you know, being like, hey, could you might get a 9-8, even though I just saw my cat like sit on them and, and crush the spines. So could have been worse, could have been way worse. These are still pretty nice looking books. Um, probably, you know, VF, definitely, be, definitely better than VF, I think, uh, 8.5 to 9.2 ish books. And that's not too bad. Not too bad for, for the price I got them for. You can't lose. Um, I have a feeling that I could probably sell these as is for 10 bucks each, 15 bucks each, 20 bucks each, maybe. Um, and be making quite a quite a nice little profit on. Uh, but I'll probably hold on to a couple. Maybe my best two I'll hold on to till there's some kind of official announcement on these and I'll maybe sell uh, the other couple in the meantime. All right, guys, that's the show for today. Uh, hit the like button, uh, leave your comments below for your own cat-related comic catastrophes or your success stories with polybag books, your, failed, your failure stories with polybag books. Thanks again for watching. Take care, guys.